Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ken Busby, your cultural czar, a member of the board of the Tulsa Symphony, and we're here today with our musician moment, and I'm really excited to finally have the opportunity to visit with our executive director, Keith Elder. Keith, how are you today? Ken, thank you so much for having me on here. Doing wonderful. Uh, Excellent. And I would just like to also say thank you to you and all the musicians for putting this together. I mean, this has been a fabulous thing for the community and a wonderful thing for our orchestra. So thank you for everything you do. Well, you're most welcome, sir. It's it's a labor of love, just like yours is. And uh, but the musician moments have really been great. I've, I've had a lot of nice feedback. People have really enjoyed them. They've really gotten to know our TSO family. So I, it, it was such a great idea to do it. So thank you for uh, well, let, yeah, let, well, letting yeah. me. <laughs> I was, yeah, Ken, I was going to say, our TSO family is, is Tulsa's family. And so it, that is what's so important about these musician moments is to be able to, to have – that connection with the community, with our musicians, because it's our musicians that play that beautiful music. And so, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, no, this has been wonderful. So I, I'd like to jump in so that as people, uh, you know, you've you been with us now uh, a little over a year, a little. Just about a year, yeah. Just about a year. Seven days longer. <laughs> That's right, yeah. okay. Uh, so uh, starting uh, August uh, of last year. So, right, yes. right. Um, and I bet you this year is not anything at all that you were anticipating. It is not, um, <laughs> you know, uh, but it's a year of um, flexibility. It's been a year of amazing music. It's been a year of meeting a community that really supports the arts. Uh, and it's been a year of really feeling welcome to a community, um, you know, that, that is, that, that is, you know, we've been very happy to be able to, to, to be a part of it. Well, we've, we've really enjoyed having you in the community, and you've certainly jumped in with both feet. Uh, I want to talk a little bit so the people that don't know your background, though, uh, you came to us from Aspen. I was but, with the Aspen Music Festival in school, yes. And, and okay, so and then tell us what you were doing there, and then also what, what led you to that. You, you've got an interesting background. Tell us where you're from originally. Let's sure. just go back. Let's just go back. <laughs> where are you from? Let let, let's start from the beginning as opposed to from the end. How's right, that, that sounds I, good. I, I grew up in uh, East Bridgewater, Massachusetts, so just south of Boston. Right. Uh, um, I was a horrible trumpet player. I went crying to my band director and gave back the trumpet. <laughs> and he was wise enough to say, oh, well, if you don't like the trumpet, here's the tuba. Uh, and I ended up uh, becoming a tuba player, uh, going to Indiana University, studying tuba. Yep. Uh, as a performer, I've performed uh, everything from circus to orchestra to you know jazz to so I did a lot of performing in the late '80s, early '90s. Um, but when I got to Indiana, my professor sat me down and said, "Son, it's going to be easier for you to be a governor than an orchestral tuba player <laughs> because there's only one tuba player in every orchestra, uh, and it opens up whenever the tuba player retires, as opposed to a governor, which there's one per state that opens up every four years." Right. And so um, he said uh, that got me into management. Uh, I started. Uh, and he got me an internship with the Boston Symphony that I thought was going to be in the management office, but it ended up being as a stagehand on the stage, and okay. which then got me to a job with the Boston Symphony as a stagehand. That then uh, my my career from there went from stagehand to um, operations manager of Tanglewood, their summer wow. home, to right. touring manager of the orchestra, to uh, I directed their jazz festival. I did all their non classical bookings. And then I uh, managed the Boston Pops and managed all the touring of the Boston Pops. And that was wow. over a tenure of almost 18 years wow. with the Boston Symphony and Boston Pops and had a wonderful opportunity of working on film projects like the music for Mystic River, um, you know, producing the pregame show to the Super Bowl, to the World Series, to, wow. I mean, so the opportunities were yeah. just wonderful there. Yeah. Um, and I'll get back to that as we sort of talk through this and, you know, how that's helping me today. today. But then mm -hmm. from Boston, went on and became the vice president with the Detroit Symphony. Right. Um, you know, one of the things when I was in Boston, which was a great counsel from the president of the orchestra there was I went to law school. I became a lawyer mm -hmm. uh, with the, while I was working with the Boston Symphony. Uh, the president of the Boston Symphony was a lawyer as well. And so... Uh, you know, became a member of the Massachusetts Bar, uh, member of the New York State Bar, uh, the U.S. Supreme Court Bar, um, and uh, went off to Detroit 
uh, right at the exact time that nobody wanted to move to Detroit because right. it was 2008 and it was the economic crash of the car industry. Right. Uh, mm. So I then went back and opened a law practice. Uh, I had a law practice in Massachusetts um, that I focused on litigation. I was in court almost every day. Um, but when, as a lawyer, uh, I love practicing law. I love advocating for clients. I missed not having an office next to the stage. I missed yeah. that my only music, and this also is something that we can talk about later, my only music was through the radio or through a screen. And um, mm -hmm. where I would, my office, uh, example, when I was in Boston, my office was uh, Arthur Fiedler's old office who managed Boston Pops. Wow. And so yeah. it was right next to the stage. Sure. I was able to hear music all, the time. all day. Yeah. Uh, and so I then went from, uh, while I was a lawyer, I was also working then for the Eastman School of Music that I pr produced all their concerts and I developed a full concert series there, flying back and forth between Boston and Rochester, New York, uh, and then uh, went on to Aspen, right. where I was the general manager running the day-to-day -day operations of the festival there, as well as hired all the faculty. Uh, and, uh, and then from there... Uh, you know, I've, I've had the wonderful opportunity of being able to come here to Tulsa. Uh, and so uh, that is a, a picture of about 25 years in a little under five minutes. Yeah, that, <laughs> that was amazing. You did that so well. Uh, I'm still amazed as I think about your career as well. I'm still amazed we were able to lure you to Tulsa, but very thankful that we were. Well, let, I'll talk a little bit about that. Please. Because it was funny that Please. I was in Aspen and uh, Linda Fraser, who's on our board, reached out and said, would you be interested in coming in and sitting down and talking about the orchestra? And, you know, I was overseeing all of uh, the program of the day-to-day -day operations in Aspen, which is also part of, I had an education program for arts administrators. So we had about 130 master's students that all worked there. Mm -hmm. And I thought she was going to talk to me about, do you know of anybody that would be great to come mm -hmm. to, to Tulsa? Uh, and she sat down and she said, would you be interested in potentially uh, moving to Tulsa? And my first reaction was, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> but, not uh, honestly, what, not seriously, no, what no. <laughs> me was Linda's passion for the orchestra yeah. and Linda's passion for the arts and passion for Tulsa. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, she very smartly said, how about you come and visit the orchestra and come to a concert? And so Felicia and I came out to a concert and we got here. And the first thing we said is that this is a community we want to live in. This is a community we want to be a part of. This yeah. is an orchestra that has amazing potential. Mm -hmm. uh, pieces are all put in place. Uh, Ron Preddle has done a wonderful job of building that foundation on a house that can be built that is, you know, um, so exciting to do. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I'll never forget going back to Aspen and saying that we're moving to Tulsa. My boss looking at me like, you're going from Aspen to Tulsa? <laughs> and, and, uh, and then I started explaining to him this community. And yeah. all of a sudden he said, now I understand. Sure. And, uh, it, you know, even with this crazy world that we're in right now um this has been a wonderful decision for felicia and i that's great well uh, as i said uh, we've loved having you in the community you're both just just great people let alone uh the music that you bring and so forth it's interesting <laughs> to think about uh, having a law degree as your fallback i still find that fascinating <laughs> uh to allow you to do your music i think that's just great but i think that really gave you some really good negotiating skills and, and things that have, have served you well over the years. So Well, well, Ken, the thing that's interesting <laughs> about the law degree is I went to law school to become a better writer and okay. a better public speaker. Okay. And never planned on ever practicing law. Yeah. And for my arts sort of management career so far, practicing law was probably the best thing I could have ever done because what you're doing when you're in the courtroom and what you're doing when you're you're representing clients as you're advocating and right. you're babes basically telling a story and communicating a story to a judge, to a jury, to a mediator, where to opposing counsel, where, um, that's what we do in the arts. That's what yeah. we do here. Uh, with the tells the symphony is, is advocate. Why is it so important to have an orchestra and an orchestra of this caliber in this community? Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, and you articulate that message. Well, I was thinking, 
Uh, you talk about the fact of, of where we are now uh, as, a, <laughs> as an organization and, and amid this COVID-19 uh, pandemic. And, uh, you know, as a board member, uh, you know, you have, you have educated us, you've guided us, uh, you know, all along about, you know, we are a community service organization. You've, you've helped us refine our mission and, and really driven that home. And, and you're absolutely right. And you say, you know, the, the thing is about a community service organization, we have to be serving the community. We have to be out in the community. And so you, you, you know, you carefully guided us, and I, I, I want to let you talk about uh, where we're headed for September 5th, because uh, we're one of, what, five, six orchestras in the country? I'll let, you, I'll let you tell the story. Sure. So it goes back to what I was saying with the Boston Pops. So when I would, had the opportunity with the Boston Pops, we performed all over the world. And right. I did concerts on beaches. We did concerts at uh, baseball parks. We did concerts at football stadiums. We did concerts in arenas. We did concerts all over. Uh, I mean, we did a full arena tour one Christmas that we had. We were selling out seven, 8,000 seats every night at different hockey arenas. <laughs> so uh, when March 14 came around, which is the fateful day that we all talk about, which is the day that we shut down. Uh -huh. uh, and, you know, the, the, the day the music sort of, as they say, died uh, from right. that perspective, uh, from live music. Right. Um, we started thinking, and how can we, and the key word here is responsibly and safely provide music to this community, because it is our mission to be, a, we are a community service organization. We believe, and um, you know, studies have proven that music is so essential mm -hmm. to a community. Uh, and it's not a, a entertainment fun thing. It is fun. It is wonderful. Sure. But it does so much more mm -hmm. to a community. Um, you know, it really, you know, when you're at a concert and your fingers start tapping, there's a reason. It touches right. you. Right. You know, our hearts playing a beat. There's, you know, the hair on the back of your neck stands up because you're hearing something that really touches you. Mm -hmm. So, um, so music's so important from that perspective. So, with this um, sort of challenge of COVID that we're dealing in, um, we had a couple of options. Option one is, do we shut down? Right. Do we say, see you next year? Um, we're not that, uh, you know, it's just not going to work. And I didn't think as a community service organization that that was even an option. We have to provide right. to this community. Right. Option two is, do we just do online content? And I will tell you, I was on a call with 33 orchestra leaders yesterday, and every one of them are doing online content. Um, and online content is great. We're talking right now through a video screen. Right. But it brings me back to when I was sitting in my law practice, and all I could hear was radio and see video um, and not have live music every day. Right. There's big difference between what you hear through a speaker and what you feel mm -hmm. come from the stage. Absolutely. The energy. Um, it's, you know, it, it's being part of something. It's being part of a community and doing it safely, responsibly, mass, socially distanced, washing your hands, and living in this new norm. Right. So um, that's when we move forward with this 1-0 concert. Yeah. As far as this that I know, there are orchestras around the country that are doing concerts. But there are not orchestras around the country that's using an orchestra as big as we are. We are using a real orchestra. Right. We are putting 52 members on the stage um, with an audience of up to, I think, 1,600 people, which is about 19% of, uh, of the baseball stadium. We're putting in a stage. There's going to be a roof. We're bringing up a piano from Dallas for the <laughs> piano soloist. Um, you know, we've been, uh, we are... Um, putting in some sound reinforcement so everybody will be able to hear and hear well. Um, we're figuring out how to use the Jumbotron, which is the big video screen at the right. ballpark. It's so important to be able to provide live music, and we're looking at doing this on September 5. Um, tickets are going to be – they're available uh, now, but they're, they're limited. I mean, you right. know, they're only going to be – so people should be going online at TulsaSymphony.org to buy their tickets. Uh, because this is not this is going to be a concert that people are going to remember for decades. Absolutely. Um, and how we started, you know, maybe this turns into a tradition, but there's always a first that we've started. And, um, I, I think back where, uh, you know, we were talking about playing outside, and so many patrons and and members of the arts community remember 
I think it was Aida that was performed outdoors at yes. TU. Yes. Well, that was like decades and <laughs> decades and decades and decades ago. That's and true. People are still talking about that content. Right. And talking about that. So right. I firmly believe that people will be talking about how this is such a wonderful birthday celebration and how the orchestra came back and performed live music and, and that they were a part of this. And they're going to be talking about this for decades ahead. Um, well, and, you know, uh, as, as, since it is the 250th anniversary of, of Beethoven, it's, it's great that we're going to be able to, to share that with the audience. And, and then there's a, a special treat at the end of the concert. You, you need to ever end every 250th birthday party with fireworks. There you uh, go. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, that's, that's the, the, the funny thing that, uh, as I say, goes back to my years with the Boston Pops, you know, is that you always need to end with a flag drop, fireworks, confetti, something to bring the community together. And then, you know, at one of, you know, they have that such a wonderful tradition on Fridays of fireworks. Right. It just made perfect sense. Sure. Uh, and so... You know, the, the important thing that I think as we're navigating this pandemic and navigating COVID-19 to think of is that we just need to be responsible, right. which is keep your distance, wear a mask, wash your hands, and we can come together as a community, even though it's six feet apart. We're together as a community exactly. experiencing the same event mm -hmm. together. Right. Um, and that's what's so wonderful about this. And. You know, um, I'm, I'm very, also very happy that, you know, um, you know, the opera has taken our lead. There'll be some opera at the ballpark. So the arts community in Tulsa are thinking creatively of how mm -hmm. to do things differently than, honestly, the rest of the world and how to do it safely and responsibly. Which is awesome, given, given the fact that the model that we have at the Tulsa Symphony that's, that's so unique to us and that other orchestras have looked at our model of how to do it. And here we are, again, leading the way for safely uh, providing this opportunity of live music and ability to gather. Uh, you mentioned masks. I know, uh, of course, uh, all of the uh, attendants, uh, the attendees, all of, our, all of our guests will be in masks and asked to wear masks. And, and, and I know you, uh, that you've told us that uh, One Oak also has really good uh, staff and ushers and so forth to how to keep people uh -huh. separated. So it, it really, this is, this is as safe as you can be. Oh, and you also got the blessing of Dr. Dart. So, uh, yeah, we're working with public health on all of this. Yeah. Um, and, and the important thing is, is it's like, you know, we're, we're, we need to learn. This is around for the next six months to a year. We right. need to learn to live with it. Right. And we need to learn to live safely with it. Yep. And that means wearing masks and being socially distant. And, you know, um, by doing that, we'll flatten the curve. Right. By doing that, we'll enjoy Beethoven music. By doing that, we'll enjoy being together. By doing that, psychologically, we'll come together as a community. I mean, this is right. a, right. you know, this, this pandemic has economic tolls. It has um, also social tolls, but it also has a psychological toll because Absolutely. we're all sort of communicating via, like we are, Ken, via video conference as opposed to being together. Right. And even though you're six feet apart, you're still together, together in the same space. Absolutely. And so um, that, that's going to be so important as we're bringing this together. And I hope that we get people coming to this concert that might be a little nervous going to the PAC because they've never been to the PAC, but they've been to a baseball game and they'll, they'll come, out, come outside. Um, you know, it, it, it'll be outdoors. You can wear shorts or you can wear summer attire or you can wear a suit if you're comfortable. This is all just all aspects of this community coming together. Which is, which is what the Tulsa Symphony represents. So it's perfect. It's a perfect analogy. It's a perfect, yeah. Um, I can't even imagine, all, though, all the additional logistics that you're, you and your team are having to go through to prepare for this. All of the... the just the additional efforts to keep everybody safe. So to that point, I want to ask, <clears throat> is there anything like some downtime for you? Ah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I, I love what I do. And, and, and I know you do. I'm always thinking through what we're doing. And so downtime for me is time with the dogs and Felicia. You know, um, we took a week right around the 4th of July and, you know, Roger Blaze, our, our, the president of our board, gave me a list of places on the eastern side of Oklahoma to visit. And we drove about 1,100 miles all over on day trips just so that we could experience what this 
wonderful state has to offer and see the, the, the different aspects of each of the different communities. So we, we did that, and uh, um, so that was wonderful. We, we still go back to Massachusetts. Our family is there. Unfortunately, this year we're not going to be able to do that. But, uh, right. you know, the, the plan would have been to go back there and enjoy some time on the beach um, and in the water. But, uh, you know, that's not possible. But honestly, um, you know, right now there's so much going on with the orchestra. Um, and it provides an energy that is really wonderful to be part of. Yeah. Uh, when you think of a concert at One Oak, you think of, okay, how do we seat the audience? So it's socially distant to make sure that it's socially distant because you can't really lay out a map of where people sit. It's going to be a flexible map because you might get somebody coming with four people or then somebody coming with two people and somebody coming with one person. So you're always massaging that seat map. Sure. We're bringing in a stage. We're bringing in lighting. We're bringing in sound. You know, we're bringing in one of the top classical sound engineers uh, in the country that does classical sound reinforcement for the Boston Symphony and the New York Philharmonic, um, we're having to make sure it's safe and mm -hmm. working with Dr. Dart and working with other doctors and, and uh, medical doctors and, and researchers on protocols to make sure that our musicians are going to be safe and we can, can take care of that. Um, working with our soloist. Our soloist is flying in and how do we get him here and get him here safely and, and all of that. And um, so there's been a lot of work going on. I know. And at the same time is how do we sell tickets and how do we raise money and how do we make sure that people know about this? And so um, there's a lot going on, but it's an exciting time. Absolutely. No, yeah. absolutely. Uh, and I guess we should remind folks again. So TulsaSymphony.org. Yes. It's where they yes. can get their tickets and and, and, and and get them soon because, you know, our typical patrons will wait till the last <laughs> week to buy tickets. Well, that's and that, I will that, tell that's you not that unique to wait till the last week. There won't be tickets. <laughs> right. And, and that that's not unique to the Tulsa Symphony. That's just no, how we that's, that's how we do that, the arts that, in that Tulsa. That's a trend across the country. Yeah. But, but we're bad about it in Tulsa. We're very last minute making that, you know, whatever. So uh, and, and, yeah, a, people are worried about rain. What happens if it rains? Well, we have the, the venue held for the next day that will be a rain day. Right. And, um, you know, it does rain here in Tulsa and it gets stormy. But I will say that the one, I mean, I'm new here. I've been here a year. But the chance of uh, a two-day hurricane here hitting, at, you know, two days in a row is right. pretty low. I'm not yeah. saying it's not possible. Don't, 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 don't jinx it. Don't jinx it. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, you're... In September, the heat, yeah, it's it's yep. more likely a heat wave than, than rain. You're right. You're right. So, uh, well, Keith Elder, it has been a real pleasure uh, visiting with you today and getting to know you just a little bit better and, and, and to share your infectious energy with our, our TSO family. Well, Ken, thank you. And, and, and we're so grateful for everything you do, everything our board does, but especially everything this community does. I mean, this community and the arts community here and the patrons that are here, um, is so welcoming and, and so supportive. And, you know, one of the things that I, I would just like to sort of end with is that, you know, we're looking at what this orchestra will look like in the next five years. And this community deserves an amazing orchestra here. And, you know, we're going to continue to take this orchestra and really being, um, you know, creative of putting things together for this community yep. and you know and having the best musicians here that we have you know being able to share and open their hearts for everybody is going to be so wonderful and i'm so happy to be a part of that and well, uh, once again ken thank you for everything you do likewise i truly appreciate it Absolutely. and uh for for everybody else come to tulsasymphony.org or come to our facebook page to follow what we do and uh I hope to see everybody at the concert. This is going to be a memorable concert that uh, people will be talking about. And just think about it. We're going to get to see each other in person in on September person. 5th. This is exciting. <laughs> All right. You take good care, and we'll talk to you very soon. Perfect. Thank, thank you very much, Ken. Uh-huh.